Hello and welcome to the... No, that's not how I do it. Just keep recording. Just keep recording. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> it's because I was focusing on getting the stopwatch in time. Hello everybody and welcome to the Matchbell Podcast, the place where we talk all things wrestling past and present. Today, we're doing a retro review of Money in the Bank 2011. If you agree or disagree with us, leave a note in the comments. And for more content like this, like and subscribe to the channel, as that will really help us. If you prefer to listen to us on the go, um, you can find us on all your favorite podcast apps. I'm your host, Stephen, and I think that John Cena does not suck. Joining me today, Manchester's number one CM Punk fan, Alex. Hi. Um, I think that the big show is actually quite small. <laughs> We've got Manchester's number one Luke Harper tribute act, Richard. Uh, oh crap! I forgot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just say Cesaro isn't that bad, just to annoy Ainsley. Because uh, everyone knows who Ainsley is. And we've got Manchester's number one Umaga fan, Liam. Hi. Uh, Steve Austin looked better with hair. <laughs> All right. That's what we like to hear. Let's get into it then. Uh, what are your thoughts on the pay-per-view, everyone? What was, that, what was everyone's quick general thoughts on this? It Go got on. better as it went on. It started... like it, The first match was good, but then it like slowed down immensely. And then it just <laughs> got better and better after the second... The second money... I'd, yeah. I'd say the second Money in the Bank match was better than the first one. Definitely. And the main event made the pay-per-view great by itself it was just it was definitely a memorable like when you think of milestones in the companies you know where they've been and where they've gone that is definitely something that'll always be mentioned yeah Yeah, it's it's definitely uh definitely one of the points that sticks in your mind um just that final sort of image that they leave on. Yeah, definitely. I um I, I can't agree with you more. I feel like it started off strong. We had a bit of a bit of a slow patch. Um nothing too exciting. None of the matches were exemplary, nothing four and a half star kind of matches, but that main event that pulled it pulled the whole show up to to be so much more. Um disagree with you though, I thought the first money in the bank match was far superior. Oof. Okay. I agree. I agree. Good thing we're about to talk about it. I love a disagreement. Uh, Yeah, what's your thoughts on the pay-per-view, Liam? Um, I thought it was really good. I think it holds up quite well. Um, Nine years on. Um, I definitely agree with the final match being the high point and sort of that that ending card with... uh, with Punk in the in the crowd was a really good way to uh, to end the pay per view. Sweet, alright, we'll get into this. Um, came from the All State Arena, Chicago, Illinois, in Rosemont. Um, had a buy rate of one hundred ninety five thousand. I think that's something special. Um, it mentions that on the Wikipedia page, and it never usually mentions buy rate, so that must have been something special. I just didn't do the research. Wow, so professional. <laughs> <laughs> so professional. We're so professional over here. This it's what almost we like you were definitely uh, hosting today, weren't it? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> like this is the plan all along. <laughs> right, uh, let's get into it. So we got the intro to the show. Um it just feel it was a big build. The whole intro was going over the um whole pipe bomb promo, everything, everyone getting excited. Uh we got Booker T, Michael Cole, and Jerry Lawler on commentary. And before we go any further, I, I just like to talk about this. Um I thought this is the area of the commentators trying to get themselves over rather than trying to get the action over. Uh, I feel like that really detracted from a lot of the matches. Can we just say that Booker T is an absolute mess on commentary? I hate him so much. <laughs> He's so, so bad. bad. So bad. He started going, the, the whole Fade 5 thing and the... the oh, I call him d because he's one of my fave guys. Like, no, the, that was, people called him Debray well before you, mate. Um, Jerry Lawler just and Michael Cole. That, that, this is the worst period. Oh. Michael Cole. 
this heel Michael Cole trying to he's basic like I said, it's just them trying to put themselves over rather than trying to put the wrestling over. And was, it really detracts from the show. Was this before so, or after their uh, WrestleMania match between King and jo- uh, Cole? I think it's I think it's after. I think Again, he mentions it after. in there that he, he's had his ass kicked a couple of times by King. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what made me think that it was after because he, he he did bring that up at one point. Can, can we just touch on the resounding thing of CM Punk saying maybe the company will be better off when Vince is dead? And you can't help but wholeheartedly agree. <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's a bit harsh. Maybe not dead. Maybe not dead. Maybe, maybe no. when the guy, the guy retires yeah. or something. That's a bit yeah, harsh. Yeah. No, 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 wish no, somebody no. dead. Yeah, not. I don't wish him dead. I'd never wish that on my worst enemy. But, um, like, just, yeah. The, the idea about it, I get what you mean. Yeah, whole, just, just put him in a drug induced coma company. like his wife. It'd be great. <laughs> we saw that last week, yeah? Some guy yeah. called that there. Right, and then we get straight into it. We're straight into the SmackDown Money in the Bank match. Uh, obviously, there's no need for setup here. It's the Money in the Bank match. Uh, first out, we get Sin Cara, the, uh, the good old botch machine. We got oh, Wade Barrett out. over here. We got J- Justin Gabriel. So I was like, oh, again, a bit of a Nexus reunion, and I remembered the call were a thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. I I thought they were maybe wow. more, of a, more of a core reunion than a Nexus. <laughs> because I looked on the pre-show, and the Nexus were actually on the pre-show. The Nexus was still a thing at this time. Uh, it yeah, obviously weren't. Nexus, weren't they? Yeah. So now uh, Sheamus is next. We got Cody Rhodes with a protective mask. We got Heath Slater, who doesn't have any kids yet. Uh, and we got Daniel Bryan, and finally Kane uh, finished the match. Daniel Bryan won the match 24 minutes and 27 seconds when he took out Cody and Barrett from the top of the ladder, grabbed the briefcase, and Michael Cole just kind of pooed all over him the whole match. Pardon yeah. my language. Uh, yeah, so uh, so thoughts? What do you guys everyone think about this one? Michael Cole was absolutely awful. During this match. It was absolutely horrendous. The worst calling was I've it, ever heard. Was it Michael Cole or was it Booker T when they said when someone jumped off something? They went, you know what we call that? That's splat. That was Michael Cole. Hey, it sounds very Michael Cole. Oh, oh I do remember oh. that bit, yeah. God, oh, I think it was Daniel Bryan come off the bit. He, he just splat. He spends the entire match. He spends the entire match just just hating on Daniel Bryan and it's like why? It, it was a thing no. at the time though, wasn't it? Bryan? I think it, it was, was because yeah, it was, it was, was th- there was a Daniel Bryan and Miz thing, weren't there at that time? I think yeah, he yeah, was his coach on and the NXT. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. um yeah. Cole's character at that point was a massive uh oh, Miz fan, man. weren't he? So that's yeah, why yeah. he was proper slated him. Because it was the same later on with Alex Riley. Who yeah, I well, forgot yeah, was yeah. a thing. Yeah. Like when he walked out, I was like, I "Oh yeah, that was a thing." <laughs> Alex Riley, you mean John Cena in trunks? Yeah, that one. That's terrible. <laughs> yeah. the, Good old uh, a John Cena you can see. Yeah. <laughs> John Cena. Right. Uh, let's go back to this match now. Go on, Alex. I was just gonna say, like, Justin Gabriel was awesome in this match. Oh, <laughs> that uh, that four fifty splash in that oh, tiny but, little space. That yeah. He had. And he even clipped the ladder on the way down. Like, <laughs> oh, I yeah, I really yeah. enjoyed watching him in this match. I, I enjoyed this match, to be fair. I thought it was, uh, did my one one issue I have about it is I feel like it did run a bit longer, 25 minutes, quite, quite a long time for a uh, ladder match. But um, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really, we got the um, whole really high impact first half of the match. Everyone got in all the big the big spots and everything. Uh, yeah. I surprisingly, the actual in ring action. I did not think Sin Cara looked bad. No, I was going to say is... this. I thought that everyone had a really good showing in this match. Like every I mean, single person in the match had a good showing. Even Sin Cara. The original Sin Cara. I was about to say that. Original... Which yeah, Sin Cara yeah, was this? this was mystical. <laughs> I'm sure this was mystical <clears throat> and not Unico. Go on, Alex. What were you going to say? I I was gonna say like Sin Cara had a good show until he um, broke his finger and he got a stretcher out for a broken finger. Oh, was this that <laughs> was this that injury? Yeah, you see his hand go under the ladder. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah they kind of went off the whole ladder spot, didn't they? Working kayfabe though, because he was power bombed through a ladder. 
So yeah. Yeah. Oh, she the Seamus spot. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah. But you could see on the ladder, you could. I don't know if you noticed, there was a little lighter grey bit, and I, I pointed it out when I was watching <laughs> it with, with my wife, and I was like, see that bit there? That's so it breaks. <laughs> He's going through this. Yeah, it's a wrinkle, it's yeah. A wrinkle ladder. Isn't it? I think oh. the uh, majority of the ladders in this pay per view look mega fake. Yeah, especially when they split oh, and it's really wood. Bad. Yeah, and <laughs> it, it was the. Um... Just spray painted grey. Yeah. yeah. I think it's the. Uh... The second ladder match when they're grabbing the little tiny ones and it's just like it looks like a toy. Oh, <laughs> no. was it that that is... He got in the ring. I think Evan Bourne got in before Ray, and I was like, "Why has he got that ladder?" And then Ray got one as well, and I was like, "Fair enough. They've just told him to get tiny ladders." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Some people. So uh, yeah, there was a moment in this when the core tried to get it back together. Wade Barrett was kind of directing them, and the crowd were just like, "Nah, let's just chance the Punk instead." <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Which, isn't that every that pay per view yeah. ever since? Yeah. <laughs> but no, I felt like the crowd did get quite invested in the match. I was surprised there was there was only a few moments where they started chanting CM Punk. Um, but this crowd, this, I didn't mention it in my match overview. The whole crowd was just it was insane. It was such a hot crowd. Yeah. It was like a, a, crowd from really it was like there. the night after WrestleMania, weren't it? Like, like it was yeah, it really that, was. that they were re- really raring for it. I thought mm. uh, Kane was a bit of a misfit in this match. Do you reckon? Yeah, Kane like, seemed like a bit of a big guy like that. Mm. When you look yeah, at all I, the people I, I, stood in the ring, and then it was just Kane, and I was like, mm. like there was obviously a reason it, for it. Like it's not like yeah, these it, days where they just throw a random guy in there. He must have been. There in must the story have been some kind of storyline stuff, but yeah, we got no kind of setup, no pro- no package or anything before the match. Um, I thought it was a really good moment for Brian. I. See, it's it's so long ago now. It's kind of out of context. This is. It just seemed like a nice moment. The crowd was all behind him. The crowd pops when Brian got the got the briefcase. And yeah. I like well, this. That. Yeah. This is this is a bit before the whole yes movement, isn't it? So. Uh... Yeah, it's before like but you can still hear the the crowd are behind him, aren't they? You can see the crowd starting to really rally behind him. This is before the no stuff as well, and well, obviously the yes stuff came first. <laughs> but um, I remember this probably going on to his feud with Mark Henry and Big Show, and he was in the triple threat matches with those two, like the cage match and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, I I really enjoyed this match for what it was. Good, good just start. Just as an aside, just as an aside to this match, mm-hmm. Cody Rhodes really needed knee pads. <laughs> I don't really? like just you. Yeah. Yeah, or just something to make his legs not look so long. <laughs> yeah, you can see why he's in um, you can see why he's in pants these days, can't you? Yeah, because yeah. he's got such long, thin legs. Like it's really <laughs> it's like that. To be fair, they're not the worst legs. Brock Lesnar's legs are pretty twiggy, aren't they? I don't know how he, stand, no, how he stands up sometimes. Do you want to put that kind of stuff out there on the internet for Brock to see? Nope, I'm fine, thank you. I'm in a different country. He never leaves his ranch, he's fine. We're all right. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, I'll only show up for one day and then disappear anyway. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not paying him to come and beat me up, so he won't come. That's fair. Uh, anyone got anything else to say about this match? I think we covered everything. No. To be honest, right, let's, let's yeah. move on. We get a backstage se- segment where showing early in the night, Vince McMahon pu- pulls up in his limo with John Laurinaitis and an attorney, this attorney guy. Uh, they want CM Punk to sign a new contract, so they're going to have some meetings. And we jump to the Divas Championship match with Divas Champion Kelly Keller, who is E. Torres, versus Brie Bella with Nikki Bella for the championship. There's no package to tell them. Sorry, can I just say before we start this match? Did I'm, anyone I'm else think? That, up, yeah. Did anyone else think that Brie Bella looked good in this match and has steadily gotten worse the longer she's been in WWE? And Nikki's steadily gotten better. But it's, it's like the it's like Nikki's absorbed Brie's wrestling knowledge. <laughs> yeah, she took all Brie, looked, Brie looked decent in this match, but if you looked at her most recent ones, she was god awful. Maybe she passed all of her wrestling talent on to her child. 
Maybe, well, yeah. yeah. So that's how it works. Yeah, yeah like your Max Space Jam. Your... <laughs> Has your child got all your wrestling knowledge now, Richard? Uh, uh, probably. He watches more than me. Crikey. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the sales yeah, for the match is no sorry. There's no package to tell me why I should care about this match. I don't think WWE cares about this match much, to be honest. Kelly Kelly won the match in 4 minutes and 54 seconds with a Fey Master, which she called the K2 Rock Dropper, according to the internet. Okay. I saw that on the internet. Yeah, I believe it. I had to Google it. Um, <laughs> and yeah, thoughts, thoughts on this one, everyone? Uh, well, we, we talked about this whole foreshadowing of the crap divas era last week when we were discussing china <laughs> and uh ivory match and it's just yeah. yeah um i was explaining to my wife that you can see where we got the whole oh it's a women's match like tea break time yeah yeah, it's like, yeah. <laughs> like yeah that's what it was it, it didn't get much time it didn't get much build up it didn't get any Nobody cared about it. No, the crowd didn't care. I don't feel like anyone backstage cared. It's let, it just... let's let's put two women out, scantily clad. Have um, Jerry Lawler talk about puppies and be oh, misogynistic okay. for a good five minutes, and uh, yeah. yeah, let's throw in a bit of body shaming to go with it. I didn't oh, get that. Was, that, was that didn't make sense to me. That, that was gross. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty yeah. sure Bree's just as skinny as Kelly Kelly. Yeah. It, it, they're playing on kind of mental illness and anorexia and stuff, and just it, it's just disgusting. Really, it's it's gross. I, I don't know why the a big company of that size thinks this kind of stuff's okay, it, and it's... I don't think that nine years ago was a different time either. No, no there's, there's no excuse for it nine years ago, and it's all the. We were going into the whole PG era at this rate as well, and it's like mm. you're directing at kids and having somebody who's going to be a massive role model for your company going, she doesn't even eat. It's like, where was the yeah, mentality? I, yeah, I, I wasn't a fan of this. I wasn't a fan of this at all. The story they were telling was just, it was just awful. I thought that the this, this story that they were trying to push really pulled away from the wrestling because there's actually some pretty good spots in the match. I, I don't mm, get why was, two. Was I don't get why two people were uh, were at ringside for it and had no involvement in the match whatsoever. Oh, no. that's, what? that's another thing. Like that plays into the storyline. Why are they there? Like I thought you didn't there was magic. Spots. Like there was the apron spot with Kelly Kelly where she was like doing a handstand or something on the apron and then just gets slammed off it. Oh, that was good. That was like, a good spot. Went first into the floor. I'll I was that like, one. that's been a, that's a good spot. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, and then there was um, but then the finish came out of nowhere. Yeah, like, I know RKO's out of nowhere, but at least the commentators <laughs> make a fuck about it, and they go, "Oh, it's an RKO out of nowhere." This fame master came out of nowhere, and then they were just like, "And there's the finish," and it's like, "Okay." In- Internet says K two. Internet says K two rock dropper Liam. Yeah, it's a K two rock dropper out of nowhere. K- <laughs> <laughs> Sounds so much better. Just rolls straight <laughs> to the top. <laughs> I yeah yeah. They, 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 I won't they, show you my ev- notes. There's evidence here. There's evidence here that these people could put on a decent wrestling I, match. I, I started my notes at this match, and yeah. I just wrote, and I've, I've covered up the other word because you, you're not allowed to read it. Uh, it just says Divas <laughs> match word. was, and then a naughty word. It was very bad. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, yeah, let, let's let's just move on from that. This this one is, is there anything else to say? Anyone? No, no I did. Um, um, next we have the Battle of the Behemoths, Big Show versus Mark Henry, and for this one we do get a package, so I can give you a bit of setup. Um, Mark Henry will break our face if we look at him funny. He then puts Show for a table. He destroys Kane, destroys a load of people. Uh, Mark says Big Show caused all this. All this pain when he attacked Henry and saw Big Show absolutely wrecking Mark Henry, jabbing him in the face and all that. Um, Big Show dead not to get in the ring, but he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. He's lit a fire. He brought it up on himself. Uh, Show says Henry is going to need that fire. And Big Show can put it out. Very clever wordplay there. Show thinks that he's better. But Henry thinks he's stronger and better. And yeah, somebody's going to get their ass kicked, it says on here. 
That's the last thing that was said. Finish the match. Mark Henry wins in six minutes with two World Strongest Slams and two splashes. Uh, I have a post-match post segment thing here. Do you want me to go over that now or should we go over that at the end? I suppose we'll be talking about it, won't we? Oh, yeah. Yeah, go, um, over, yeah. Yeah, go for Let's it. Let's talk over it. So, yeah, post-match, Henry gets the chair, wraps it around Joe's ankle and does a kind of mid-splash. What's it called? It's like a, I've got a splash written down here. But it's kind of like a board splash. Wouldn't it? Yeah, from the second yeah. rope. Uh, medics come out and quickly realize they're going to need a bigger boat. So some guy brings, drives down a drivable structure <laughs> and then they take away the big show. He, he had a nightmare driving that thing. <laughs> oh, he yeah. did oh, if, if, only had, had, if only it had reversing beeps, it would have been hilarious. It, <laughs> it, it, was, it was like... Um... Austin Powers trying to do the, the turn in. <laughs> Quite like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, just... uh, yeah, so th- thoughts on the match, everyone? What does everyone think about this one? The package was good. The package really got... I I, I'd, I'd forgotten this match ever happened, and the package really got yeah. me hyped for it. I was like, I actually want to watch this now. This is re- this looks really good. Uh, this that that is... big show oh, is a lot better than Blubber Big Show that we got, uh, you know... When he started crying in the ring that time because um, <laughs> Triple H wanted him to punch someone in the face. Uh, like a big guy is supposed to be big and strong and mean, not yeah, not yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, and Mark Henry is like so good for a big guy. Oh, he's, yeah. Th- is this this, match, up this match is very good. Yes, this leads this, up to the yeah, Hall of Pain. Yeah, this is leads And the Hall, of, yeah, Hall of Pain is the best. <laughs> part of Mark Henry's career. He, he was incredible during that time. So yeah, dominant think, and scary. Um, I think Big Show is the first inductee into the Hall of Pain. So that makes sense. I yeah. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, oh, I, I love Charles Robinson's reactions in this match. I don't know if you noticed that. Every time someone threw a punch or a slap, she was recoiling in pain at the back and it was like, oh! <laughs> yeah, it, 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 was, it was quite well animated for it. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but I enjoyed it. I, th- I do love Bert Little Mage. Um, I, I thought it was an okay, it was an alright match. It, it was any, it wasn't anything special, but I don't think it needed to be. I thought it was just about getting over this guy as an absolute monster. It, it was just a couple of couple of giants beating ten shades of. You know what out of each other. Poop. Yeah, it was very. It was just a pretty cookie cutter hoss battle, wasn't it? Really. Yeah. Uh, as it, as it, the package said, somebody got their ass kicked. Yeah. yeah. I think the story they told was much better than the actual wrestling in the match itself. I agree. Yeah, I agree. But as we spoke about last week, yeah, as we spoke about last week, there's definitely a place for that kind of stuff, and mm-hmm. storyline can win out over wrestling at times, and. I, I, I didn't really enjoy the actual wrestling much, but the story was great, and I enjoyed, I enjoyed it for what it was. Did you say how long the match was? It, I did. It was six minutes. So exactly. it's quite short, mm. but I don't think Big Show came out of it looking weak, especially with no. the no. amount of things he hit him with at the end. It looks like I really do need to put this guy away. The and it also fits the narrative all... that big big guys can't go long, which is good. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the commentators kind of put over I don't know if it's true because they lie all the time but nobody kicked out of the World's Strongest Slam and then Big Show did oh. it took another World's Strongest Slam and a couple of splashes yeah that would oh, be oh, interesting geez. to know if that was real yeah they lie all the time no, I don't yeah, it's not like Kevin Owens has fought um, Sami Zayn multiple really times enjoy... since... <laughs> I did really enjoy watching, them, um, watching Mark Henry work the leg yeah that was good mm. Like, you don't really get, you don't really tend to see like ultra heavyweights working a body part. They usually just like slapping meat. <laughs> Big wow. man slapping meat. Slapping <laughs> at the ends. Um, you know. All right then. Uh, yeah, it was yeah. it was nice seeing him like work the leg. You know, he he kicked the kicked the ring steps into the leg first, soften it up, and then he yeah. Yeah. Was, Mark Henry Looking jumped over the, the ring to um, the stairs. <laughs> it was good. That I liked was a great ring. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't That's figure out what I was saying then, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then the half Austin. So it was just all it was all good. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah, we got the half off. Yeah, that was. Mm. So, yeah, I liked right. it. It was good. Yeah, when they Very say nice. uh, good good things come and bad things come at the same time, then uh, I bet Vince was loving this match in the back and then hating it at the end of the show because <laughs> he loves his big boys. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah he, he does. does. Yeah, he does. And uh, we'll, we're going to move on to Vince now, if everyone's finished with their comments on this one. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So we're going to move on to Vince. He's with John Laurinaitis. They're, they're talking, but we can't hear what's saying. Uh, and then the mics get turned up. We All week they've been negotiating. It's not going well. Josh Matthews comes in, and whew, he's very brave. Very, very brave here to come up to Vince <laughs> and start asking his question. He asked if Vince is resigned, uh, as re-signed. Punk, but the answer is no. Punk said, biggest ingrate Vince has ever deal- dealt with. He offered him the most lucrative contract, but Punk said no. Uh, Vince is trying for the fans, but Punk pointed to the door and said, get out. To so Vince, can you imagine that? Uh, Josh Matthews' dad still carries on after this. He says, John Cena's name, but no, don't say John Cena's name to Vince because this is all Cena's fault. This is what the fans want. If by some chance Punk leaves with the title, May God have mercy on John Cena's soul. And then we're on to the Raw Money in the Bank match. A bit of setup for this one. Again, no setup needed. Up first is Alberto Del Rio. He gets a ladder. Next is Kofi Kingston. He gets his own ladder. Next is Jack Swagger. Swagger? Swagger. Who's Swagger? Jack Swagger. He gets his own ladder. Next is Evan Bond. I didn't know <laughs> if he could carry a ladder, but he did get his own ladder. Uh, next is R Truth with no music, and he gets a tiny ladder because he's scared of heights, and I'm a big fan of that. Next is Alex Riley, or more professionally known as A Rye. He gets a normal ladder. See ya. Next, we get <laughs> the Miz. Right. Miz comes out to some pretty decent pop there. Miz seems to be over with the crowd at this time. He gets a small ladder because a small ladder is smart as a weapon, and Jack Swagger looks like a fool with a big ladder because what's he going to do? Now we've got next and finally, we get old Rey Mysterio out. Good old two eyes Mysterio. Can he carry a ladder? Yes, two, he can carry it with his two eyes. Let's get the, let's get the finish to this match. Albert Odell Rio wins this match. Um, and I've not written down the time. He did it in 15 minutes and 54 seconds um, when he tried to take off Mysterio's mask and succeeded. And then he bashed him in the head with a briefcase. And they all fell. Everything went wrong. It all got botched. But a, Del Rio still managed to get of back up that ladder. <laughs> there was a few, wasn't there? Oh, yes. uh, yeah. So let's get into the match. Go on, Richard. Do you want to go first? Because you seem to... Um, it was brilliant. The... Oh, my days. Yeah. And I've forgotten yeah. just how good Evan Barn is. Oh, my God. He's so smooth. That sh- was it, is it called a shooting star? Pre- yeah. Evan uh, that... Barn. Uh, yeah, off the ladder uh, with Ray Mysterio at the bottom holding it still for him. Uh, that was amazing. <laughs> I was like, because I, 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 I genuinely forgot if it was forwards or in like, a front flip or a back flip. And then when we did it, I was like, wah! <laughs> it was great. Uh, what other Very spots was there? There was a spot that was botched where R Truth runs up a ladder and then tries to jump over the ropes and land on the ladder, but misses it and then re jumps and then hits it and whacks Jagger in the. Jagger? Yeah, Jagger, Jagger. in the face. Jagger, you've just, you've mixed me up when you said Jagger. Sw- uh, Jack Swadder. Jack Ladder. <laughs> Jack Swadder. <laughs> uh, that was a good a good moment, and uh, yeah, the I finish was a lot better than the first um, Money in the Bank match. Uh, pulling Ray's mask off, like what a heel move, especially in Luchador wrestling. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but I watched uh, Lucha Underground. <laughs> what? Uh, no, you've, you've never mentioned it. Uh, yeah, like, and then he throws him onto the other ladder, and I was like, ooh, and then he swings back over, and all ladders fall on the floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a bit of a botch, botch finish. I, oh. I agree, it's, it was a better idea for the finish, but it can be a botch. Yeah, but the crowd but loved I, I thought, it. They were great. Yeah. yeah, the crowd were into this one. Uh, the yeah. crowd loved, loved some ladders, didn't they, on this one? Um, yeah, so what were your thoughts on this, Liam? Um, so my thoughts, I thought uh, Miz looks like an absolute star in this match. Mm. Like he's just absolutely incredible. The pop that he gets as he comes out, um, the pop oh. he gets as he re comes out. Um, <laughs> the pop just... in his knee. <laughs> the pop from his knee. <laughs> it was just incredible. Um, I, ne- I never thought the Miz was 
so over in 2011. But I know, I forgot about that. Oh, he yeah. had his Mania match, um, didn't he, as well? Uh, against uh, John yes. Cena around this point in yeah. time. Which yeah. was a great match. Um, I thought Kofi's spot with him inside the ladder was pretty clean. Oh, but he was just yeah. dipping, dodging everyone as he spider man up the ladder. Yeah. Um, and then um, I thought that the demasking to get Mysterio off the ladder was really good um, use of Ray's mask and the whole like not, <laughs> not unmasking people. I'm happy you were um, to, be, yeah. to be fair, Richard, one go on, sorry Liam, sorry to interrupt. Um no sorry. Um it's just so yeah, I thought that the mask the demasking was was a great spot because obviously like, Ray's mask Ray's face and being demasked matters more to him than winning a title. Like his identity is more important than gold, basically. Uh, which I thought was really, really good to show that. Um, but I think other than those like spots, nothing really hit home for me other than that. Yeah, I thought at the beginning when they all started attacking each other with ladders, I thought it all looked a bit goofy. Yeah, I agree. And I think as well, they didn't. not everyone got the same fanfare as they did in the SmackDown one. So everyone in the SmackDown one had their moment. They all looked good. Whereas I can't think of one thing our truth did in this match. Yeah, these comedy spots, didn't they? He was there for the comedy, basically. He did the splits yeah, under but... the ladder at one point. <laughs> oh yeah, he did. Uh, and then he instantly uh, got wailed on. He did. As soon as he turned yeah. around, so... Yeah. Anyway, what, what did you think about the, the match, Al? Enjoyed this one, to be honest. Um, I like the focus on just destroying Del Rio under a, a bunch of ladders. Oh, yeah, there. At the start, because that man got I, yeah, buried. I forgot he'd won this match, and I was like, what has he done wrong backstage? I know he's not a good person. Was, yeah. who, did everyone know that at this point? Cool. I mean, it, it, foreshadowing. Um, but, yeah, just the, the abuse he got at the start of this match. Um, yeah, that uh, Evan Bourne was great. Um, like two wrestlers that I completely forgot about in this, like the whole time I've been watching wrestling. Like Justin Gabriel in the first match was mint, and Evan Bourne mm. in this one, like definitely, uh, definitely hit some spots. Um, yeah, yeah. The, the finish was a little bit messy, um, but yeah, like overall, it was it. It was an okay match. Um, I rate the yeah. first one rather than this one, to be honest. But, yeah, yeah, that's what I mean when I'm saying that, Richard. That I prefer the first. It's not like they're miles apart. They're, they're both they're both great matches. I just thought there were some really goofy moments in this, like they all attacking the ladders at the start, and then they put up a tiny ladder, and they were all trying to climb it and reach, and you could see like they weren't even halfway there. Yeah. And then there was stuff like that, and uh, it just looked foolish. I think it can all, like, with them being so similar, I reckon it could just be that I prefer the stars in the second one to the first one. Possibly, yeah, yeah. That's Mm -hmm. fair. I think they were both great matches, to be fair. I just enjoyed the first one a bit more. Because of Daniel Bryan. Oh, yeah, you and he can Plus, be Daniel that, Bryan and the ending of the second that. one I bet that led to a lot of storyline as well because they did have a feud what? after this I'm pretty sure I, th- I think they had a match where he tried to rip his mask off again but Ray was wearing two masks <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know why but I've got that in my head somewhere I feel like that was real <laughs> but it shouldn't be real but I feel like it was uh, did this lead to some goofiness at SummerSlam as well where uh... Del Rio cashed in and won the title from Punk or something. Yeah. Well, they yeah, definitely didn't yeah. cash it in tonight, did they? Yeah. Oh, no. I, well, I think we'll get we were meant to get the uh, the whole summer of Punk, weren't we? And it just went... Yeah. He got to fight Kevin Nash! Oh. Yeah! And then <laughs> oh, eventually, eventually the Rock was like, I need a paycheck! Give me that title, <laughs> boy. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, oh no. just... It didn't go well. It's posh. You could see why Punk left in the end. Not just from booking. Everything. We'll we'll get onto that match. We'll yeah, talk I think about it might have been the Ryback right matches as well. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff, isn't there? Uh, so yeah, we uh, 
a backstage segment with Alberto Del Rio being interviewed. He doesn't know why he's there because he should have already been the number one contender because he won a triple threat match. But now he's going to prove how great he is anyway, regardless. Um, and then we're going on to the World Heavyweight Championship match with World Heavyweight Champion Randy Orton versus Christian for the title. And we get a bit of setup on this one again. Nice little pre-match package. Uh, Randy and Christian for a capital push punishment. Randy hit the RKO and won the match, but Christian's foot is under the ropes. Uh, Christian thinks he deserves one more chance because the refs call, but Teddy Long puts him in a one-on-one match with The Undertaker. No, I'm just kidding. He gives him the contract to the match, and Teddy gets Randy to sign it. Um, if Randy gets disqualified, or is there any bad refereeing, Christian becomes champion. Randy said they had a great match, but he won, and then he won again. He's getting, he's getting angry now with Christian's tactics. Christian knows he can win, and he's going to prove it. So we get a finish to the match. Christian, Christian, who's Christian? Christian wins when the, the title when he spits in Randy Orton's face. Randy gets angry and gets himself DQ'd with the low blow. And yeah, let's, uh, let's get on to this one. There was some post match stuff. Uh, but yeah, let's just talk about it with, the, with our opinions. What did you think? What do y'all think of this one? Uh, the the Spanish announce table no souls like a beast in no, this like match. It, uh, it's, like, it's like it knows that I'm counting these. Like I'm keeping track of these. And it's like no, 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 yeah. no, no. no. You Start, will not go on. Start a counter on me, will you? Well, <laughs> oh no, oh no, we're not having any of this. Yeah, so, yeah we still at, we still at two of the uh, Spanish announcers table because we did get two in one show. Do you reckon the yeah. Spanish announcers taking no more nails with them and just on purpose <laughs> glue the thing <laughs> like, together I'm a bit better? Sick of this. <laughs> I think so they did it for this paper. They did it for this one pay per view, and then Vince was kind of like, no, no, no more of that. That needs to go every single time now. Oh yeah, you see, he did it the first one. He started working at the ramp, and Vince was like, "No, no, go do it." Yeah, as long as he didn't run yeah, down to the ring to sh- like, tell it off and rip both his quads, yeah. to be all right. <laughs> it only seemed like Randy was told to go back and like, <laughs> it good, good, yeah. if you can smash the table. Right, come on, give it. A, you can give it one more try. Come, come on. on, give it, give it the old college like, try, Randy. Come on. Give it, give it some beans, that... lad. Give it some beans. <laughs> and we got that crazy face from him that with the the, the, the meme face. The meme face with his tongue out. Randy's meme face. Uh, I I enjoyed this match. I um I know it had a goofy finish, but it was leading to something else, wasn't it? I, I liked to. I really enjoyed the way Christian was kind of put putting the heel kind of work on because in my memory I'd kind of forgot that. I thought that he was the face in this feud. Here in this match coming up, yeah. I was like, oh, face Christian versus heel Randy. Um, but yeah, I really I really enjoyed that. Um, crowd. Crowd was chanting Randy sucks a lot. I know Randy wasn't over too much at this point. I it think was sort maybe... of 50 50. Yeah, was, yeah. There's a few people uh, chanting for Randy, but there was quite a few Randy sucks chants as well. Yeah, I'm thinking, was this around the time when he, he was a bit overexposed? The whole Randy scene, I think, every pay per view. Maybe. Oh, do you remember Can't, those days? Hollywood. So <laughs> every bad. single pay per view. Those um, were the days. But yeah, I like the way that I like. I enjoyed the finish. To be honest, I, I really liked the finish. Um, just yeah, Christian doing dirty heel tactics to win the title. He was from the very beginning. He was trying to get himself disqualified, trying to get him around his head, bringing in the chair, pushing him, slapping him, and stuff. And yeah, I think the uh, I think the spitting was a bit much, but that's just my personal opinion. Yeah, yeah. I've never. I, to be fair, I've never yeah. spat on someone and they kicked me in the dick. I don't, I don't feel I like that. I think if you did, have you ever spat on someone though? Uh, I, I don't want to talk about those those times. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like if I think like that would make me very angry if somebody spat in my face. Oh no, I'm not. I'm not disputing that it didn't make him angry. It's just I, I'm just not a fan of seeing it and seeing that kind of thing. Like, just that's fair. I remember that I next time like we're it, together. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this this guy spits uh... somebody loads. Go on, Liam. I think of the um the the Dolph Ziggler and Drew Mack match that we had at Extreme Rules where yeah. Ziggler basically had a stipulation that meant he can win this title in any way necessary. And 
they just didn't follow through with it. Whereas with this one, they sort of did a very similar thing with Christian, where it was like, if you if Randy gets disqualified, I get the title. Yeah. Um, and then it act- they actually pulled the trigger on this one and they went through with it. Mm-hmm. And I thought like, it just made me think about that that Dolph Ziggler match just like. We could have had so much more. You know what it made me think of? The uh, Eddie Guerrero match where he whacks the canvas and then throws the chair and then hits the floor. It made me think, I was like, if they do something like, I've forgotten this match, Uh, and I was like, if they do something like that, this will be really cool. But obviously it wasn't the same, but I'm still glad that they they followed through with it. It's nice to see that. But yeah, it did make me think of that, which is also a great moment. It's like the it's the idea of the title can change hands like this and then change back a few weeks later and it's not it doesn't make Randy look weak. It just adds oh, to the storyline. Yeah, it, it made him look stronger, didn't it? It like, made him look so strong. Mm. Like just seeing Randy absolutely flip his biscuit was just <laughs> incredible. <laughs> like the guy just split like it was like two parts of Randy yeah. that just it was okay. crazy. He does hear voices in his head. I've just got this image now of, um, like, you know, when people sit in pubs and try and flip the beer mats on the table. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> Randy with a digestive, just going, oh, right. I'm on Slimmy get... World Room. Yes. Can we stop talking about biscuits? <laughs> oh, I don't love a biscuit. I love a biscuit. <laughs> um, I also oh, remember yeah, general... this time, I hated, I hated the whole one more chance thing. I remember oh, hating it, uh, and I still hate it now. Uh, I think it's really annoying. But if that's what it was meant to do, then fair play, it did its well. But that this was, was the so start annoying. of one more match, though, wasn't it? So annoying. Oh, just yeah. it's annoying me now thinking about it. <laughs> hey, I mean, it, it got him a two K showcase on. Um... <laughs> okay, wow. is that the Kelly yeah, Kelly just... finisher? Is that what we're talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the KT whatever it was it's called. Wrong way around, mind. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I really enjoyed this match. Although it was, I've just realised why it's K two because of the Kelly Kelly. Kelly. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Oh. <laughs> K sweat. <laughs> Oh no. Oh. Oh. Anyway, has <laughs> anyone else got anything to say before Demon we move on eyes. to the main one? <laughs> uh, anyone else? I- I'm good to move on. I'm fine. Right, so, yeah, well, this is what we're here for, really, isn't it? This is, it is. This is we're basically this watching is the pay per views. You're like, this is what we're here for. Um, bit of trivia first. This was the first WWE match that the Wrestling Observer Newsletter gave a five star to. Since 1997, when Shawn Michaels beat The Undertaker in Hell and Cell at Bad Blood in Your House. A long time period there. And we got a lot of setup for this one. Um, yeah, so let, let's, let's go for it. So Vin suspended Punk for the stuff he said, the world famous Pipe Bomb promo. We kind of started with that, a bit of clip, clips of that here and there. Um, if anyone's not seen that, the actual promo is well worth a watch. watch it. It's so one good. of the best things in wrestling ever um the company is full of ass kisses he thinks the company will be better after vince is dead as we've said before he said this yep uh vince wants to sign punk he's bending over backwards to give punk everything he wants all the merchandise all the movies but what punk really wants is just a microphone in his eyes the microphone is power in his eyes the microphone Uh, is a nice cream bar he wants the ice cream bar. I didn't mention that. That was kind of encomp- encompassed in the merchandise. Uh, Vince is going to show Punk respect and apologizes. And yeah, Vince's apology is, is spot on. The best kind of apology you can ever give. I apologize. <laughs> For anyone watching that doesn't understand, that was sarcasm. <laughs> Cena. Now we, now we get some Cena. Cena up in here. He says, Punk is a hypocrite. He beat to his own, uh, yeah, to his own drum. I wrote that out wrong, but he's lost sight of uh, everything. Uh, right. Cena flubs the line. He beat to his own drum. Beat Is that what Cena drum. says? See, yeah. when I read that, I was like, that doesn't seem right. Did I write that wrong? No, no, no. He flubs the line. He's supposed to say he marches to the beat of his own drum, and he goes, "You beat yeah. to your own drum." That, right, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he's lost sight of everything. 
Punk says he's the underdog and Cena is the man. The champ, the dynasty, and what he has always hated. He's become the New York Yankees. I'm guessing he, he gets very angry with that. I'm guessing that's some American stuff. I'm only joking. I've heard of the New York Yankees. Sunday Punk They're says goodbye to right? Cena. He says, yeah, hockey team, yeah. The New York Yankees. <laughs> oh, I thought it was uh, basketball. I, I, know the, I know the team, but I don't know what it, I actually what don't it means. Know. <laughs> I don't know the sport. They're a sports team in America. Um, it's, it's baseball. Is it baseball? Oh, I just said that, I guess. Um, so, ba- Sunday, Punk says goodbye to Cena. Says Cena will say goodbye to the title and say goodbye to Punk. If Cena loses the title, he's fired. Uh, then CM Punk comes out to basically what is the biggest pop of all time. Uh, Cena comes out to the loudest booze of his career. The crowd's ready, so am I. The crowd was only 14, nearly 15,000 people. It sounds like 60,000 people in there. Um, CM Punk wins the match in 33 minutes and 44 seconds with the GTS. Post-match, Vince is very angry. He gets some commentary. Get Del Rio down here. Punk just kicks, gives him a swift kick, leaves through the car, crowd with a kiss. And we end. So, uh, who wants to get started? Should we go to Alex first, the no- Manchester's number one CM Punk fan? Oh go my God, like just watching <laughs> this, and I enjoyed the pay per view, but the whole thing was just a massive build to this match. Like, the package at the start just concentrated on Cena and Punk, didn't touch on anything else. And then they just reiterated it with the package that came in before this match. And I was so ready for it. And just that pop is mm. just unforgettable. Just Ooh. oh Prince Shevers done it. Makes you makes you makes your hair stand on end, that kind of Yeah. Um, I mean I mentioned how hot the crowd was earlier, but my God. Just <laughs> it's one of the things where you watch it and you kinda of go I really wish I would have been there for that. Oh, that would have been incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can't say enough about this match. I did feel sorry for Cena at one point, though, because there was a chance of you can't wrestle. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Punk played and, and that like... off so well. <laughs> <laughs> Punk played that like a pantomime. It was the way it was like, no! Yeah! <laughs> Just... That was so good. I thought Cena yeah. got a lot of cheering in this match, though. Yeah, I, the kids' voices were strong in this match. The kids' voices yeah. were strong, and the commentators really insulted our intelligence. There was literally a, a crowd like saying, "Like, let's go, Cena." They go, and I can't get out. I'm so angry. The king goes, "There's not a single Cena fan in here." They're like, "I can hear them." <laughs> That's just like, Jerry. I can he literally hear them. It. Yeah, he can. can. He's got. Got... Take away the monitors; well, they can't saw. see either, can they? That's no, true. Yeah. yeah, we know from last week they are, they can only see through the monitors. Um, other than that, though, I thought the commentators did a good job in this match. I suppose that's a that's a controversial opinion because they've been absolutely shocking the rest of the show. Um, I thought the commentators did a really good job of selling the importance of this match and how if CM Punk wins, he's literally he's taking their title and mm. that's the company they work for. And yeah, I thought they actually, surprisingly, did a really good job in this match. They even mentioned it that it is the crazy. biggest match to date, I think they said, in WWE. I, th- I think mm. they said it's the most important match yeah. there's ever been. In the history, yeah. Which made it just seem so colossal. It was great. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And it, it, even, it even plays into them like having a bias this time. Like The fact that they were biased against CM Punk actually makes sense for once. Because yeah, I got there. Well, no, I just basically finished my thought, but yeah, he was like the <laughs> enemy, think, wasn't he? I think over the next 10 15 minutes or something, we're probably going to talk a lot about CM Punk and throw a lot of superlatives onto him. But before we do that, I just really want to talk about John Cena and how amazing he was in this match. It takes two guys to put on a great match, mm-hmm. and Cena was just absolutely. I never felt like he was getting carried through the match. He was he was there for the whole match. Absolute pro. Some amazing. They made like all of his moves look so brutal, and the psychology, the way that they carried through the match. Punk. He was starting to get on top of Punk and stuff. And I just thought this was one of Cena's best ever matches, and the chemistry those two had 
I like the, uh, just absolutely amazing match. I like the nice little touch of um, when Vince came down to try and sort of screw the finish, and it's the whole no, I'm not not having this. And that's not me. Like, yeah, that's not yeah. who I am. He's still he's even with all the booze, he's still he's still going to be a hero. Yeah, like definitely, uh, like cemented the way mm. he was. Uh, mm. I enjoyed that touch, and I think the only um, clear sort of botch in the match was the uh, the crossbody that didn't really come off. Yeah, I didn't know Cena. Yeah, I think he landed on his knee, but then Cena sold did, the knee yeah. injury, so it wasn't that bad. He sold it really well. Yeah. Cena's selling in this match. Just, I think everyone only talks about CM Punk when we think back about this match, but I think Cena was fantastic. Oh, C- Cena was the um, Cena was the perfect dance partner if you oh. if you like sort of like for Punk mm. definitely. Um, totally agree. Well, they were they were massive mates backstage and behind the scenes and everything, so it makes sense like to have chemistry was so good between yeah. them. I don't know how yeah, you could they... hate Cena. He's so I I don't think he's ever afraid to not put someone over. He's he's so, like they say he's a company man. He's not a, he's not just a company man. He's a wrestling man, and he knows that even if it it hinders him slightly in a storyline, as long as it progresses the the wrestling in general, it's great. He's yeah. He like we love yeah. to hate him, and we did hate him, but we do we respect him yeah. a lot. I respect what what he's done and I think he's definitely learned from his mistakes as well like the stuff with the Nexus and things like that I think he has learned from all of that and he even did an abdominal stretch in this match that's not in his four moves of death yeah I wanted to talk about the amount of just the amount of submissions that John Cena pulled off in this match like I was counting them I think he must have had about seven different individual submission holds, and I was like, John Cena doing a submission that's not just a sloppy STF? Oh well, the way God. they... Su- I-, I think this is also credit to Punk right now, but the way they made the STF feel like the most brutal move in the world, like it does usually look so sloppy, but in this match, it looked like it could end the match at any point. Like it yeah, was- I think I think Cena actually tried to, to lock it in properly during this match because you couldn't fit another <laughs> head in like you could normally when he's doing the STF. Like, normally he leaves a gap so big, you could probably, like, fit a big show in it. But <laughs> this time it was pretty tight. So um, props to him for that. And then, like you say, Punk selling off it was really, really making it look so devastating, so deadly. But yeah, we had yeah. wrist locks, hammer locks. We had, like, um, a finger... Like lock as well. We had him doing the abdominal stretch. Um, we had him with the STF. He did. Um, he had like a. He had like a, a sleeper hold where he had the arm in a vice. There was oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Many things. It was like, John, where where have all these moves been for the last eight years? He <laughs> was just uh, rehearsing for when AJ Styles turned up. <laughs> But yeah, oh, this was great. Um, and to to segue on from that, I think everything Cena did in an absolute five star performance. Punk, just Punk was just. Can you give it more than five stars? I mean, the rest of them observe news like Dave does. Let's give <laughs> give six, Punk a six star for his performance. Um, amazing. What what do, you, what do y'all think of uh, Punk's performance? I mean, <laughs> is there anything to say? It's just incredible, wasn't it? Yeah, the whole thing speaks for itself. It's amazing to go from like, because he was heel essentially, but like to go from that to then be hated by Vince McMahon and become a white hot baby face (laughs) by the end of the match. Because essentially he was. Let's be honest. Like the crowd Mm. is so behind him. Um. Yeah. Like. Oh. Just crazy, like it's an emotional roller coaster the whole match. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree with you. I think the yeah. match had everything. We had all we had some great technical kind of slow transitional wrestling. We had some really high impact spots. 
We had some big kickouts, finisher reversals, finish kickouts, just everything. This match had everything. There was a lot it of really counters seemed... in it. There was, yeah. But mm. I'd never thought that it was done badly because I feel like sometimes you can really overdo that. I just felt like this was the right place for it and the right time for it. Yeah, it it know. didn't need um it didn't need a daft stipulation sticking on it either. Like no, it was just, just a straight just a straight up match. match. Uh, my only issue with the match, and it's not so much an issue with the match itself, it's more of an issue. It's actually more of an issue with Punk, um, yeah. which is rare for me. Oh, to, you bad mouth him! I know it, it's <laughs> rare for me to bad mouth CM Punk because, um, like you, I, I really am a massive Punk, uh, punk Mark. But so the counters were so sloppy. Do you reckon? Like, I, I thought so. some, of, some of Punk's counters looked so sloppy. Like when he when he counters the AA and he's supposed to flip out of it and land on his feet and oh, he, yeah, lands on, that. he lands flat on his rumpus instead. And, it's like, <laughs> and yeah, then there was, um, what else was there? There was the there was the crossbody where he he did a flying crossbody to see his knees. Watch that, yeah, yeah. Um, that there was something else as well. Oh, it was the um, John Cena went to go do the leg drop. And Punk was supposed to power bomb him. Just. Cena just landed flat on the ground and put power yeah, on the air. Yeah, It was just like, I know. Oh. The kind of, I can't feel like... There like yeah. small things that you can sort of dismiss because the, just the grandiosity of the match itself, just yeah. it, the spectacle yeah. of it all just makes you sort of dismiss the small mistakes. Wow, I... Uh... I definitely had rose tinted glasses on for this one. Then, if I only spotted the <laughs> crossbody as the only watch, but... I, I spot yeah, I spotted the power bomb as well, but I forgot about it. I <laughs> just because the yeah. rest of the match, it just carried on so fine after that, so well after that. I think yeah. it was a bit sloppy in the corner as well at one point. I think after Cena hits an fu, the, he takes him up to the top rope to give him like a super fu. Is that what it's called? Uh, and then yeah, Punk starts, starts elbowing him, which looked really good. Uh, but then it took him like a just a little bit too long to get on with the next move, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, the transition yeah, was a bit slow. Yeah, there's a few weird... They're going, for, they're going for nearly 35 minutes. It's... Have you got the match yeah. time there? The world starts in the face. Yeah, so... Oh, I had it up. It was 34 minutes, 33? Or so... The bit of research that I did, uh, I was thinking like of uh, championship matches lately, especially involving mm, like people like Brock Lesnar, which is finisher after finisher after finisher until someone finally gets pinned. Uh, this match went 27 minutes without an FU or a GTS, and I was like, "Is it is it is it going to happen at any point?" Like, and then they only hit two each. And they were both yeah. very good, uh, what are they called? Um, near falls, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like both times. But one of them like, was... like, even though I know that <laughs> I do yeah. this so much. You know the finish. <laughs> even though I know the finish, I was like, oh, he kicked out. Well, wow, really <laughs> But yeah, 27 yeah, minutes without a finisher. I'd... Do you know why, though, Rich? Do you know why, Rich? Do you know why that's happened? It's because, um, it's because they changed the formula in 2K12 so that you could save finishers. <laughs> <laughs> oh bloody hell. There was also, yeah, was the first one where he hit the GTS and they were too close to the ropes and Cena went out the ropes. That was one yeah. of them, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that'd be the first one. Yeah, that was nice. I liked that. Um yeah, when so he's yeah, rolling she... Cena back in, that's when Vince came out. Yeah. yeah. So let's let's talk about that finish then. Uh what's everyone think about the, the Montreal screw job type thing? It's nice seeing John Laurinaitis getting floored. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's always nice. Yeah. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like it added to the um, to the realness of the match, the gen, the genuine kind of like, oh, is Punk actually leaving? It's like, oh, there's a screw job. And it, it didn't pay off, though, but that surprised me. I remember back at the time thinking like, oh, that's it now. This is over. We're, we're screwing out of the match. Even if Punk's staying like real, that's how they end the match. And I, I enjoyed that it didn't end that way. It surprised me again. It keeps, it keeps surprising me this match. Mm. It yeah, was. Did get, uh, 
Yeah, it was a good, it was a, it was a good way to finish the match, especially because it made it look more like it was Vince's fault than Cena's fault that it ended yeah. with Punk winning, and we all know that it goes on to a you know more matches, and it probably made those more uh more um what's the word? Just it would have made more people want to watch you know uh, a repeat. Because it was quite a sl- not not a sloppy finish, but it wasn't it wasn't a straight line finish. Yeah, we didn't get a clean finish. Yeah, yeah, there was more story to be told. Yeah, just coming from that. So that after finish. this, was it? Um, they had a tournament in there to do the next champion. Yeah, yeah. where Rey Mysterio won. Rey, Rey won Mysterio and won it. Yeah, Cena came out just beating him. All right. Yeah, Rey Mysterio. Like, you just. WWE champion, and then Cena comes out, cashes in his uh, his John Cena in the bank, and then uh, <laughs> and then wins. Yeah. Yeah. And then Punk yeah. returns. And then Punk returns. And then it was champion versus Soon champion. Both had the title. Yeah, because yeah. they both had their own title. I remember that. That was great. Yeah. That was uh, that was the end of this pay per view. That's that we we got the Punk running off through the crowd and. No music, just cut. And Vince's acting amazing. at the end was absolutely Oh yeah, different. Vince was great. Vince yeah, was fantastic. He was good throughout all of this. He looked. He looked devastated. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. Just on a quick sort of fun thought. Go do you me. think the pop would have still worked if he had cult of personality? What do you mean the pop would still work? No, like, because, like, the kick of that first theme that he had, uh, the Kill Switch Engage song. Yeah. I think for that night works really well because it's that straight slide from the guitar and everyone just goes boom. I don't think the scratching going into Cult of Personality would have had the same effect. I think it does. I don't know. I feel, I feel I like the crowd are louder than, over the music. The cra- because I can't hear the music as well from the crowd. So I, I don't think I, it's I don't could have been worse. It could I have been Cesaro's we... sirens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly well, do we'll... think though that the um, the punk like the scratch before Punk's um, entrance theme is is almost like Steve Austin's glass smash or like it's definitely on purpose um, or like the the coin yeah. drop from from Rainmaker. You know, like yeah, it's, it's sort of that like shh, you, like you know who's coming out because it's yeah. that that one thing that just like bam. I think you recognise those win. the most yeah. at like uh, Royal Rumble events. Like if you know instantly who yeah. it is, then it's great. But sometimes yeah. some people's music hit, and I'm like, "Sorry, who is this?" Who, I, I, yeah. I just wait till know, the cam- camera pans round, and then I'm like, "Oh, it's uh, Mike McKill." <laughs> <laughs> Naming someone and it went wrong. <laughs> McGillicuddy. Mike McGillicuddy. Yeah, I tried it. I didn't. It didn't come out right. It, it definitely helps some people. I mean. The minute you hear you think you know me and yeah, yeah. just yeah boom it's like yeah that's edge <laughs> yeah <laughs> and there uh, thanks for this everyone this has been retro review on the match about podcast again if you agreed or disagree with anything we say leave us some notes in the comments and if you enjoyed this want more content like this subscribe to the channel and thank you very much for watching see you next week thank you, thank you.